Hey, it's Adam Sessler, everybody. Hey. How are you, sir? I'm good. Good to see you. Um, before we before we get to the game, real quick, we actually have some breaking news. Uh, the New York uh, Magazine's Vulture blog reported that Steven Spielberg's DreamWorks picture might be helming. The new Halo movie, is that true? Oh, Dreamworks is the Duke Nukem Forever of movies. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, I, I, I guess so. Uh, they are interested in getting it. Uh, you know, Universal already kind of dropped 12 million into their attempt, you know, all those years ago with Neil Blomkamp and all that stuff. Uh, this would actually probably be not based on the games, but more on the books. Maybe like Fall of Reach. Okay. Which is kind of, yeah, it's a little different than actually if, if, if you play Halo Reach. Apparently Spielberg was blown away by one of the treatments and uh, he's interested in doing it. I wonder if maybe this has something to do with the fact that Bungie kind of left Microsoft and the rights behind them as they went over to Activision right, to work on their next project. Right. Could have something to Throwing do with that. Throwing it yeah. out there. No, no, no. It's, it's, uh, it's good coincidence. enough. We have to, we have to report it, of course. Now let's get to the goods. Enslaved Odyssey to the West comes to us from the developers of Heavenly Sword. Yeah. Um, and I, we've seen post-apocalyptic game settings before, but I really was sucked into this world right away. I was super yeah. interested in it. What it's do, not Fallout. Yeah. What it's, do you think about the setup? I mean, it's, it's based on a classic... Chinese novel, I think from the 16th century. It's you know it's about the journey of monkey. You probably have heard some version of of, of, of monkey and, and his heroic journeys in, in one way or another. But they've taken it and they've kept the name of monkey and put it on the least monkey-looking character I can think of, which is that big guy right there. And uh, you are more or less journeying uh, to the West in an apocalyptic setting. It's, it, it's got a wonderful sense of mystery because there's this. Not everything is really clear at that right. time, and it doesn't look like the Fallout apocalypse. It's quite colorful. Yeah, and, and it's the first game to evoke like those pangs of, uh, well, pangs is a negative term, but it, it, it gave me flashbacks to Uncharted mm -hmm. in the sense of the, the epic cutscene. Now I'm moving through another area, epic cutscene. I feel it's like I'm involved. It's got some platforming yeah. in terms of the gameplay. It's got some yeah. combat, and it's got some puzzles. Yeah, it, it really is that same kind of balance. So let's talk about that gameplay. Uh, you're playing as the character Monkey, as you said, and besides that hey button that we saw earlier, um, how's the combat system? I mean, you, you have melee, you do have some range, combat you need to mix it up the range is not uh, you're not carrying as many bullets as Nathan Drake it's right. not really like you're even using bullets it's it's there it's fluid I wouldn't say it's the most engrossing that's out there which is good and it works because it's balanced by the good story and the puzzles that are in the game And your main weapon is that that bow staff, that staff right? yes and you can upgrade it throughout the game. You, you, you can upgrade it it becomes a lot more fun to play as you keep on playing the game and this, this is definitely one that really doesn't prove the time but the, the story is basically that you have to escort the the female character in this yes. game uh, her name is escaping me trip I believe yeah you have to get trip back like 300 miles away back to her, her homeland or hometown and you're basically her slave you're and I go slaves okay so it sounds like the game is an is, is one giant escort mission yes. which when you say escort missions yeah you want to run away yeah Craigslist fans perk up but game um, gamers they no, no, they're not fans. ninja theory is part of the modern era of game development which I wouldn't say all developers are mm -hmm. uh, and they know that if you're gonna do this don't make the combat put her in danger all the time. Really, there's a lot of danger that seems to be happening in some of the puzzle elements of the game. It's like, okay, how do I keep her from dying? It isn't this kind of babysitting as you were doing in, say, games like Resident Evil 5. Okay. Uh, one, one important thing is, no, the game does not have co-op. I don't think it works for the game's deficit. This really was designed to be a very, very well-articulated single-player adventure. Right, yeah, and it, it seems like those moments where you, you would even potentially want co-op, you're given the tools to solve it yourself. It's almost like if your partner's in harm, that's because there's exactly. a puzzle element that you're exactly. doing wrong, so figure it out. Um, I, I love it. I thought it was gorgeous. Uh, what are we? What are you guys rating it's, it? It's, it's, it's a four out of five, and it's okay. worth pointing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. This is one of like maybe two or three new IPs coming out in the latter part of the year. Right. It's unique, and for that, I hope people do go out and check it out because we need to support that. In yeah, the, in check the last out part of the year. It's something new.